This is a demonstration of new firmware features for the Casio RZ1. It will boot up to version 1.95. The most significant new feature is the ability to switch patterns on the fly. So as you'll see in mid playback, I will select a new pattern. The new pattern can be either selected by punching in a number or you can key up or down. If you select an unavailable pattern, it will cue it, but it will return to the previously valid pattern if the cued pattern doesn't exist. So none of those invalid patterns are accepted. So it makes it very error free. One of the other key features is the ability to lock the accent while playing. So right now that's just standard and you would be able to accent it more by holding accent down or you can mute it with the custom firmware if we hold the accent key and press up it will turn accent lock on Now accent is enabled without having to hold accent. If we want to go back to normal dynamics, we can hold accent and that will cancel it. Or mute still works the same way as it did before. We can on the fly turn that accent lock back off and we return to standard Casio RZ1 firmware functioning. Similar to accent lock, we have metronome enable or disable. We want to record a new pattern without the metronome clicking. We can hold down mute, press up or down. It will toggle the metronome off. You can go into record and hit play and the metronome disappears. To get it back, we just hold mute up or down, metronome goes back on, go back to record, hit play, and the metronome click returns. A new sampling feature that has been added is the ability to reverse samples. So we can easily go back by holding insert and hitting the sample pad we want to reverse. Reversing a sample cannot be done on the fly. That is while a pattern is playing, so the pattern must be stopped, but it is quick and easy to do. You can even apply it to a range of samples. So it's non-destructive. It can be reversed at any time. Another new sampling feature is the ability to trim a certain amount of silence or improve the attack of anything recorded through the sampling input. 
This can't be done after the fact. It must be set ahead of time. To do so, you hold sampling. You can adjust the sample trim. That is the amount of samples that are going to be cut off. So if we page through here with the down arrow, we leave it at this, it will trim 100 samples. We go down all the way to one. That will be the stock behavior. So it will leave a certain amount of padding before the sample. We return to 255. Now anything recorded in will have 255 samples worth of material removed, which will eliminate any silence padding, or if you have something with a slow attack like strings, it will tighten the attack up. That may not be desirable in every case, which is why it's adjustable. There are two new features in the MIDI adjustment menu. If we go to channel, you'll see there's the transmit channel. We can change that to any values between 1 and 16. We hit channel again, it'll bring us to the receive channel, in which case, again, we can adjust any channel from 1 to 16. You'll see it retains the difference in channels. The second feature is local on. You can change that to off, which means now we hit buttons, and it does transmit MIDI, but no sounds are reproduced. If we change that back to local on, we have the local sound and the MIDI transmit both. Speaking of MIDI, instead of using the MT jack to save or load rhythm or sample data, we can use MIDI SysX. So right now we have these sample pads loaded. But with the press of a button in a few seconds, we can load in new sample data via MIDI. So now we have all new samples loaded.